It's no secret that Sonic 1 for both retro consoles were great successes, and it was then when everyone expected there to be a sequel. But with people's expectations being real high, the next title had to be bigger and better in every way. When the Mega Drive edition of Sonic 2 was released, known as the Genesis in North America, it was met with universal praise, and it seemed that the franchise was on top of its A-game. But just before it was made public for that console generation, the Master System style came into the player's home first. That's right, this time around the predecessor version was ahead. Well, in Europe anyway. The SMS wasn't really performing well in terms of sales due to its age in North America, so they didn't bother releasing the game there. They did obtain a Game Gear port, however. But with the Master System still booming in Europe at the time, let's make money! Although the key questions remain. Did they make improvements that had as high an impact like its big brother? Did they fix all the issues and complaints that Sonic 1 contained? Or did it just flop altogether? Well, grab some popcorn, put your feet up, and relax as we plunge into the Sonic 2 Master System review. Keep watching to the very end to find out all the details on how you could have the chance to win Sonic 2 for the Master System yourself. Also, I highly advise you watch my Sonic 1 Master System review first. I'm not going to be repeating the similarities like the game's physics or the controls. There are lots of little chunks that didn't really differentiate from each other. But I can tell you what is new is that we have an opening cutscene, with our introductory companion, Tails, being... kidnapped. Hang about, the fox is on the title screen, he's on every level card that pops up, he's a brand new character to the game, and we don't get to play as him? Even when you conclude the experience and save the bugger, you don't unlock him. So yes, it's your duty to tackle the adventure alone, collecting the Chaos Emeralds along the way before Eggman does. Defeat a few robots as you go, show Eggman who's boss, and save your buddy. If you don't manage to find all of the Chaos Emeralds, you do not save Tails, and Tails dies, is what the internet tells me anyway. Is he really dead? It definitely appears that way, seeing his image in the sky with a star branded onto his head. That is a harsh way to kill Tails, Eggman. Yet, if you do save your two tail friend, he follows you during the credits, and they both look into the sky to see both Sonic and Tails are deceased. What the heck happened between here? And here? Did they just spontaneously combust or something? No, it can't be. They're not lifeless because I 100% fulfilled the game, so... Wait, game over? So they are dead? Ah, oh, whatever. With that ever so short story out of the way, let's talk about the gameplay. Sonic looks and controls the same as he did previously. He can run, he can jump, he can roll, and he can spin dash. I said he can spin dash. Okay, so we can't spin dash yet, however I'm not sure if they forgot to add it in or they just couldn't, but I can't help but feel there's one or two places a spin dash was built for. Really, from what I could sense, there's nothing distinct from the main mechanics in Sonic 2 compared to its ancestors. Aw oh, man, I just lost my rings. And I can now gather some of them back? Hooray! This was a fast downfall on the previous title, but now you can collect your fallen rings just like in any other Sonic game. Sounds like the team were listening to our criticism. The levels have been extended in length for more playtime, with the exception of the initial two zones. Most contain a new gimmicky feature such as the rail cart and underground zone, bouncing on the water in Alka Lake, the pipes and scrambled egg, there's a new twist here and there to keep the game interesting. Just for the love of Jim Bob, avoid the hang gliders in Sky High Zone, if you can. They're extremely complex to get a handle on, pun intended, and rather than sending you Sky High, they'll keep putting you six feet under. The layouts have moved away from being linear, and it's introduced more twists and turns, which I highly welcome. And finally, we have loops! Even if Sonic runs through them as if he's got a twisted ankle, not fluent at all. But they're there, scarcely, but there. So far so good on the enhancements, but unfortunately for me, the pros end there with the level formations. I had one small gripe which started spiralling into a world of problems and questions. Let me just say that there are way too many pits or spike hazards to deal with. The game is so strict and punishes you for not making platforms, or for falling off ledges, or even sometimes playing the game correctly. If you make a mistake, there's a high chance you're going to get hurt, 
or even die. Some of these designs I am sure are made to make you rage. I mean, this is the only time I didn't want to get a hole in one. Even the invulnerability frames show no mercy. Once I took a setback, that was the end of my life before I knew it. And what really takes the biscuit is that there is no such thing as checkpoints. <laughs> what? That's the fundamental feature of Sonic the Hedgehog in almost every game I have ever played. It's even in the first Sonic title for the system for fudge sake. This is a huge step backwards. Literally, you die, you start at the beginning of the act. Almost every level is full of terrible design except on the fourth stage which takes a huge nosedive and becomes so laid back my 10 month old daughter could complete it. Tell me, why isn't this the primary zone? I was able to rack up so many lives here. Grab 4 or 5 lives in an act, die and then repeat until you get bored. And this interpretation of Emerald Hill Zone has been named as Green Hill Zone. Green Hills. You mean... <sighs> you know what? I'm not even going to let that trigger me. Now, due to the absence of bonus stages, I was wondering on how to gain continues, because chances are you're going to need them, unless you took my extra life scavenger tip on board. The instruction manual mentions that if you acquire tails on the signpost at the end of an act, you gain a continue. But it doesn't explain how the signposts work. Luckily, my friend, Sunky Deputus, revealed the absolute bizarre way on how to gain them. You have to finish the act without losing a life, wait for it, with exactly 77 rings. 70... What kind of requirement is that? You go one more or less ring, no continue for you. I thought Sonic 1's signpost requirements was a little difficult to grasp. But this game just throws it all up in the air and into the next level of stupidity. Did the creators really not want us to complete this platformer? Or did they take the Sonic 1 was too easy remarks to heart and went into full sadistic mode? But I have to be fair to the developers here. After thoroughly reading the instruction manual further, there's another route to obtain continues. I checked it out and can confirm for every Chaos Emerald you gain and make it to the end of the act without dying, you acquire a continue. But let's talk about those colourful gems for a moment and start with the pros. In this chapter, the Chaos Emeralds are actually dissimilar colours per zone, rather than being blue each time like they were in Sonic 1. Well, those pros were short, on to the cons! Copying from its previous instalment, the Emeralds are scattered all over the place. Just how Sonic lost them since then is anyone's guess. Again, I'd rather a special stage of some sort, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. However, there is one small change that makes the world of difference. And it's not good news. After grabbing the emerald, if you die before making it to the end of the act, you have to go and get it again. Seriously, what possessed the team in thinking this was a great idea? I had no complaints with how they had it set in Sonic 1. The system wasn't broken, so why bloody fix it? At least in Sonic 2, winning all the emeralds are worth it. No, no, you don't unlock Super Sonic, he's still non-existent. Although you do unlock an extra level towards the end of your playthrough called the Crystal Egg Zone. It's here where you save your sidekick and put a true end to Eggman's plot. I mean, I don't know why Eggman has to give you Tails back, nothing is actually forcing him to. Let's move away from the logistic aspect as it's making me angry, and concentrate on the art direction for the maps. And to me, they're more than satisfactory for an 8-bit title. Plenty of colour and detail in many places and all the tiles blend together nicely, with few animations here and there. The artists have also spiced some levels up from providing the inside of a zone to the glorious outside world, which usually alters between acts. We've even got some visual weather effects thrown into the game. It's absolutely stunning. I'm finding it hard to burden the graphics here, but if I really had to nitpick, I would say no actual level art stood out for me as much as Jungle Zone did in Sonic 1. Alquilate comes close, but falls short in vibrancy. But otherwise, I'm really liking the art here. You know, I really could have done with a shield that... Uh, ha hang on a minute! There's no such thing as shields! What the... 
Okay, okay, okay. I'm calm. Alrighty, let's talk about something good. The presentation has also taken a huge step in the right direction. Turning the game on gives you the aforementioned cutscene, albeit I wish it delivered the same arrangement as the credits rather than being shown in an emblem. The title screen arrives next and it looks... okay. Not as attention grabbing correlate into Sonic 1's title screen, but more colours are needed for Tell, so I can't complain here. A huge increment in quality are the title cards given before each act. The fantastic level animated font, the smooth sliding text, and a sweet picture of our heroes engaging in this said zone. I just can't fault it. Actually I can, again why is Tails there? Was he originally meant to follow Sonic like he does in the Mega Drive correspondent, but couldn't due to hardware limitations? It does make me wonder. The great presentation keeps on coming, with the ending act result screen, so much cleaner and crisp to what I was receiving in Sonic 1. Having said that, there's no Emerald count this time around. And then finally, after defeating Eggman's final contraption, the ending credits are displayed, but we've already briefly discussed this topic. But speaking of Eggman, being the antagonist of this tale, he seems to have taken a holiday throughout the most of it. And all bar the true final boss, he has been replaced by his creations. The majority of the bosses are pretty easy, some you have to wait to hit which you don't have to endure for too long, and some you can just smack whenever you want. And then there's the earliest boss where you don't have to physically attack at all, just let Eggman take it out himself, the dumb bold prat. But some skill is still required to finish these battles, but that talent goes towards avoiding the projectiles such as the Sky High's boss or Gimmick Mountain's boss. If you manage to collect all the Chaos Emeralds, then you do face the main foe himself, but again, it's pretty easy. Wait for Eggman to finish his stroke, slap him, and then hide into the pipes until he gives way again. Just be prepared to feel a little dizzy during this boss battle. Wow, my head! Shh, Tails, I haven't saved you quite yet. But this boss can take its toll, and the music does get a bit repetitive. Speaking of the songs, what on earth happened here? It sounds like someone was beatboxing throughout the whole soundtrack. True, it's also in Sonic 1's OST, but it's a lot softer, quietly playing in the background. In the successor on the other hand, it's overpowering and almost impossible to ignore. And because it's shadowing over all the other instruments, it was hard for me to enjoy the tunes. I don't know, I could pick maybe two melodies that caught my attention, but the rest just felt bland and deflated. The music, in my opinion, is a slight disappointment and falls short of Sonic 1's compositions, but this is all dependent on the individual's taste. But at least they made an 8-bit rendition of Toot Toot Sonic Warrior theme from Sonic CD. Or did Sonic CD steal it from this game? In all honesty, Sonic 1 is the better choice for me. It had a lot of heart to it, whereas this featurette tried too hard to become something that wasn't destined to be. It made lots of little adjustments to the level design, which none of them collated and worked together. In fact, it really brought down my experience and hype for this classic. For what it's worth, the music is alright, the graphics are pretty decent, and the presentation is superb. But when the gameplay structure collapses on itself and crumbles onto me, suddenly all those pros I've mentioned no longer matter. The most important aspect to any game is the gameplay, and this, I'm afraid, didn't cut it for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to avoid this title, not by a long shot, but I seriously endorse playing Sonic 1 first. Not because of the chronological order, but because it's more lenient towards beginners, and it helps everyone get the feel for the workings of the game. Then, you won't have such a hard time with Sonic 2. Hopefully. Thanks ever so much for watching guys! If you enjoyed that video, please, please, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more content like this. Also, an enormous thanks to my sponsors for making this possible, and giving me the encouragement when I needed it most. 
To become a sponsor yourself, click the join button below this video or the sponsor link in the description. I'm sorry this took a while to come out. I had almost finished it when my PC decided to kick the bucket and I lost all my work so I had to start this retrospective twice. So many thanks for your patience. I plan to live stream this game on Saturday the 15th of December at 7pm GMT. I know I've played this once before, but this time we will be grabbing all of the Chaos Emeralds, and we'll probably end up playing something else afterwards. During this live stream, there will be a giveaway competition where you'll be able to enter your chance to win a copy of Sonic 2 for the Master System. The giveaway competition will open once the live stream begins, and the winner will be announced by the end of the stream, so make sure you don't miss it. The link to the live stream is in the description. Until then guys, you have a wonderful day. See you soon.